Continuing with the theme of old and busted versus new hotness, some of you might remember that I have another test bench which was the Z390 with the 9600K. It was getting a little bit long in the tooth, you know, it doesn't have PCI Express 4.0 and now that DDR5 is a thing, it's about damn time I got a new test bench, isn't it? So I said, hey MSI, what you got for like a motherboard and stuff? Because like there's no RAM. So then I was like, well, they were like, well, here's a motherboard. And then I was like, hey, well, maybe you'd like to know about the motherboard and the stuff and why I'm now choosing to upgrade, so. Good afternoon morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. After that mouthful, well, I've got a few more to go through because this is not even like the same level of motherboard that I had. The Tomahawk's actually a little bit higher end than the Torpedo, but this Torpedo has like way, way more feature set because the, the chipset now on the newer stuff, both from uh, uh, Team Red and Team Blue, it features a lot more PCI Express 4.0 calls because you're running a lot of high speed storage from that. So yeah, there's a couple of upgrades there. And then obviously DDR5 being like a massive step, especially in how it communicates because it's got two way instead of single way communication, which improves your performance significantly, as I've shown with the 12900K review and for the new Z690 stuff. So if you haven't looked at that, do go have a look up, but we got a full kit from them. So being not the greedy child, I opted to use the 12600K. I know how humble of me to take a 10 core 14 thread super monster of a processor. I'm intending to put it on pretty much, well, probably this exact motherboard is what I'm going to be upgrading the test bench to. Reason being is they create a lot more heat than they used to. I used to have to push the 9600KF to like 4.8 gigahertz to get any sort of heat out of it to do, you know, cooling tests or to test, you know, new water cooling kits or something to that effect. I would have to, yeah, throw like a significant amount of of clock at its face before it would produce any heat. Whereas you don't really have that problem on 12th gen if you have looked at it they are very fast and they do get quite warm so that's going to be a big plus obviously as well I'm going to be able to test DDR5 on this platform and even with the 12600K it's going to probably be better than my main PC is right now and then we're going to get a new graphics card along with that now that RTX 30 series is kind of stabilizing we need a new GPU as well but this is the starting point this is going to be the first piece of the new test bench so why this motherboard in particular let me show you a couple of nice little features and, and bonuses and add-ons that msi has thrown at our faces so let's start off with the port arrangement around the back so there is a type c usb but that's it's a gen 2x2 so it's got 20 gigabits worth of throughput on that new type c and that's exclusive at the moment to intel as far as i'm aware i haven't seen it on anything team red the sound card and stuff on this as well has been beefed up considerably. This is now a 384 kilohertz card with a 32-bit bus instead of a 24-bit bus width. So it's going to be much higher quality. So if I'm testing headphones or peripherals or any audio of that sort of ilk, I'm not going to need an aftermarket sound card to get like a really good high-level reproduction this new alc 4080 codec that's a specific realtek codec that they are using here um, and chip it's it's been upgraded significantly over previous generation 600 ohms as well in the headphone amp so i should be able to test pretty much everything from 500 rand headphones to 3000 rand headphones without running into any problems over there usbs are also ample three 3.2s 2.5 gigahertz lan as well more usb 3.0s and then more USB 3.0s. And then there's an HDMI and a display port on this board as well. So I, if I've got a chip that has built in graphics, then I can test through that properly, especially on the display port now, with that being like sort of a default across the board, then I can test high refresh rates on that card as well. So this board will give me a lot of adaptability in those environments. Then just below that as well, there's a flash BIOS button. And this is quite handy, especially if you don't have a processor and stuff hooked up to it. Then with the, the selected port, you'll see there's a flash BIOS port. You can actually just throw in a USB stick 
and power the board and hit the button and then it'll do your BIOS flash for you. So if you haven't, if you've got a new process and you haven't updated the BIOS, you don't have to, you know, go and find an old process and rebuild the whole machine. You can just press one button and then flash it. So staying at the top of the board, let's just talk about like what are this thing's parting pieces because the Tomahawk that I had, the Z390, was in an 8 plus 1 plus 1, which is a pretty good power phasing setup, especially for the R5 that I was running, which is a 65 watt TDP chip, albeit with my overclock and stuff, I get it closer to like 130, 140 watts. But if you've been paying attention to the current Intel 12th gen, the 12900K can casually chomp down on 270 watts worth of power. So to combat that and to make sure you've got constant stable power to keep those clocks up because that's what gives you your boost clocks and makes the thing run really hard and then a 16 plus one plus one when i first took it out i just i just stopped and counted the mosfets 18 for a 16 plus one plus one um and yeah, yeah like some um, significantly beefy heat sinks pretty much the beefiest i've ever seen on a board of this kind of price and budget so <laughs> it's going to keep that cool and it's going to keep power going to the chip and then to help with the RAM setup as well, they've color coded the RAM slots once again. So your actual, your A channel is actually on the outer side on the blue ones, and then your inner channel is actually your secondary. So they've color coded the blue ones to match the blue of the board. Nice little touch there. Speaking of heating, speed and cooling, it's exactly what has been prioritized here for the NVMEs. There's three Gen 4s, which are all heat sinks. So there's actually two that'll go underneath this heat sink facing each other like that. And then there's another single slot over here. But they've thrown in another PCI Express 3.0 slot over here. And speaking of PCI Express, you'll notice three 16 slots. These are not all 16 slots. So this is actually a Gen 5 slot, brand new PCI Express 5.0, first time it's been implemented. Also nice to have. And then these two are over here are actually four times and one time slots. So they're set up on the older bus set and you can actually see like, for instance, you can see the physical pinouts are not there. So for the, these are pinned out until the four time slot. So the remainder of them aren't there. So this is for like add on sound cards and RAID cards and that sort of stuff. Not that you would need a RAID card because this has RAID 0, 1, 5 and 10 and you might be only seeing four of the SATA connections over here except the fact that they've put the other two sneakily underneath the bottom over there so you wouldn't even really see them if your case and stuff is set up nice or if you've got a nice case which i'd assume you would have or something like this it's going to have garrets and stuff all in the right places all up and down the side of the motherboard and so if those two sneaky ones in the bottom there you're not even going to see them and they just like run around the edge like it a couple other little things that i can really appreciate with this board is the amount of fan headers that have been added on is Mm, it's significant and there's a specific cpu pump header on the top right over there and it's so important to use that please guys i can't stress this enough i had a pc come in from a friend of mine from a carbonite certified installer that had that connect had the aio pump connected to a standard fan header and what that system was doing was basically the pump was completely switched off the system would try and boot and the thermal efficiency of the loop was basically zero because the pump wasn't turning on so just by moving it onto the correct header then it actually supplied you know flow to the pump as it's supposed to be done but i mean hey if you want to throw in like a significant amount of fans my system is seven for instance this actually has nine connections including that one so i could have all seven fans straight off the board no fan splitter cable or anything needed everything could be connected to the board and then my pan my my pan my my pump few moments later and then the pump head there we go english words and then the pump head could be connected to the correct one so you don't have a carbonite certified installer do that to your system they've also made ample space for add-ons and RGB there's tons at the bottom over here for extra USBs you've got two full USBs over there plus there was uh, JFP one is your front panel selection and stuff and that's in the exact same spot plus there was the front setup for the 3.2 which my current motherboard doesn't have nice to nice of them to put that right next to the USB 3 so both of those are going to be able to go out to the front of like a really nice case which is what I would assume you have if you're spending 7,000 in a motherboard please don't put this actually if someone could put this in a really old case it might be a cool like sleeper board but if you've got a really good case which I assume you would have then the, those two can go out nicely with a 24 pin next to it they can make like one thick cable out of there and it'll look really neat in the system so overall as a potential working tool I would I'm very happy with this as a board because I can for instance 
do RAM testing, like I said, CPU testing and cooling testing. It's gonna give me great graphical performance because it's got the latest and greatest in the PCI Express slot. That slot's got a protect on it as well. So when I'm testing 3090s and fat boy GPUs, I don't have to worry about it breaking over there because of, well, whatever reason, it's gonna be sitting on the open end mount here with it screwed into these two prongs. So they do, they are pretty rigid, but it's just nice to have. So if I do bump the table or something like that, I'm not gonna to have to worry about it cheering the slot off. So there should be absolutely no issues with that. Plenty of M.2 cooling as well. So I can have my normal Gen, Gen 3, which is gonna be my boot drive, my Vision E2000, 2TB, that's gonna be my main boot drive and stuff like this. But when I get stuff like the Corsairs, and I don't have to go digging in my main PC, I can test them all over here and on the latest memory. Now, DDR5 is only going to become like readily available in South Africa from the end of January. I do know from the beginning of January, you are going to be able to buy MSI boards exactly like this, but in the DDR4 specification and part of upgrade kits. I've already seen overall pricing for those, and they're going to be actually quite aggressive, especially the DDR4 variants of this. For more though, please do check out msi.com and the eTech listings for the, for the MSI motherboards both of which I will link for you in the description down below. Now, that, this is basically my last video. Well, it is going to be my last video for the year. Can you believe it? We've come this far. I'm as shocked as you are that it is now the 17th of December. Can you believe it? I don't know where the year's gone, but I just want to thank everybody genuinely from the bottom of my heart for every view, like, sub, and comment, even the fraught ones, even the ones that are nitpicking at me for making the tiniest of mistakes. I still appreciate you. I appreciate you taking the time to come and view the video and to give me any sort of support. And because of that, we're gonna kick off next year. So I thought instead of doing all the giveaways now before the end of December, I did a nice big one, but we've got two for next year. One of them sponsored by MSI. They've given me this disgustingly cool hamper with like every manner of MSI branded thing you can think of, um, barring like, like a, a something you know out of the ordinary like a flamethrower but um maybe they'll get one with a boring company in the near future anywho as i said thank you all so much guys if you have enjoyed this please do hit us up with a like and subscribe and i will see you on the flip side can you feel it you got the only touch that takes me high it's electric Test the season to upgrading. Fa la 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 la. Twelfth gen is quite amazing. Fa la 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 la. Mixing P cores and the E cores was a genius stroke from Intel. Fa la la. But all round, just so we clear.